CNN News a couple years ago. They're saying put a piece of tape over your TV so it can't look at you. So people know that what you're saying is coming true. They just don't want to admit it. And I had engineers bring me in like that. about in 98 the manuals for fake transformers and cameras and light poles and they showed me where they were and then I'd I'd get death threats and attacked when I talked about it and hidden cameras in the in the in the cable boxes and mm -hmm. I mean I I I know I wish this stuff wasn't true and in closing Jakari, since you mentioned it there are so many other examples of this it's like we had a guy death threatening in the comments, so they show up here. They could have gone to the service that was doing it, you know, and gotten it, so they're supposed to. And then they start, the FBI agent that called started asking me about the Obama deception. It was about to come out. And then he starts calling around the office to other people, did we want to do something to Obama? So they just use that as an excuse to try to intimidate my staff. It's just crazy. I just wonder how they get these people, Jakari, to be this dirty. I mean, because that's dirty messing with us. Oh, yeah. Like I said, any way they can, they're going to try to shut you down. But, you know, like I said, we kind of expect these type of things like they have happened before. Any excuse they can, they're going to come after us. So we just try to be uh, the best prepared that we can. Well, Jakari, I appreciate your courage. And there's also a lot of good people in the FBI. And that's why we know about this type of stuff. I'm going to point that out. Most of them are horrified. But they have a special unit out of D.C. They're the type of folks that brought you OKC. I mean, these are some nasty people, and just pray for us. Thank you, Jakari. Thank you for your courage. Got a wonderful, thank you. thank you, a wonderful team, and I praise God every day for them. There are no atheists in foxholes, and Jesus is, is, is my rock. All right, welcome to the fourth hour of Overdrive. This is the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. We're going to talk about a little bit of Pope news here in the start. I'm going to take your calls and probably that short segment coming up after this segment. And, uh, and then I've got some, uh, you ever wonder what a Trump supporter looks like, sounds like, tastes like? Well, maybe not tastes like, but looks like and sounds like we're going to have that for you. It's a report from uh, Joe Biggs, who went to a Trump gathering in Dallas last week. And uh, also, I'm going to look at some, some uh, I want to kind of end the week with some good news. Talking about the Russians released a uh, image of the earth that is Really, it's it's stunning, um, and it, they they say it's the highest resolution image of the Earth from outside of uh, the Earth. So we're going to show you that. And then some guys went out in the desert and kind of built a scale model of the solar system and time lapsed it. Amazing film work. I'm going to give them some kudos and just talk about, you know, we're all here in on this Earth together, and while we do have some differences, we definitely have to, and we have to point out the corruption. We do have to at the end work together to fix these problems. But first, before we get to all that. This came out of the AP today, and we posted it up on Infowars. Immigration group plan Pope girl uh, plan girls Pope encounter for a year. Now, I want to call your the the article of this came out in the Daily Mail at uh, nine twenty six Eastern on the twenty fourth, or no, on uh, seventeen forty seven. So on the twenty third, I'm sorry, and then it was updated on the twenty fourth. I posted a tweet the twenty third as soon as I saw this. I looked at the pictures. I said, does anyone else smell a hashtag BS, hashtag PR, hashtag stunt? I just happen to have a T-shirt and letter and uh, slip through security. Yeah, how, how do we have this multi-million dollar security apparatus around? This little girl happens to slip through. She's got a ready-made T-shirt, uh, a very eloquent letter that she gave to the Pope. I think we have a B-roll of that of just the, and then uh, who was it? Leo Zagami pointed out yesterday that the man actually holding the little girl up, the bald man there is a, a Knights of Malta uh, general, and he is uh, one of the Pope's head of security. So it was all staged. Here it is out of the AP. Sophia Cruz's brief encounter with Pope Francis during his parade in Washington appeared to be a kind of spontaneous moment that is so enduring about the Pope. An initially hesitant young child wrapping an arm around his neck, and he offers a kiss and a blessing. But five-year-old Sophie, the, uh, the moment unfolded perfectly as it was scripted by members of a coalition of, of a Los Angeles-based immigrant rights group. They had been preparing for nearly a year for the young girl from suburban Los Angeles to make a dash to the Pope Mobile to deliver the message. She's luckily nobody decided to, you know, tase her or anything because people have been known. Uh, you look at these places uh, in the Mideast when they, they do use children as suicide bombers. So it's not out of the ordinary that that could have happened. Um, they even pulled off a similar public relations coup a year ago in Rome using a 10-year-old girl with the Pope. We plan on doing this from the moment we learned he was coming to the United States, says Juan Jose Gutierrez of Full Rights for Immigration Coalition. And, you know, he makes it act like or sound like that the U.S. doesn't even bring in anybody. 
and uh, any immigrants into the United States. Here's, here's an article out of, I think it's the Washington Post. Uh, Pope calls for immigration leniency unlikely to change debate. And you go towards the end of this, we have a statement here from Representative Michael Burgess of Texas. The thing that always strikes me is when we get into these discussions is the United States takes in more people every year legally than the rest of the world combined. And you know, we had the biggest prison population. We also take in the most immigrants. You start from that premise, it was 1.7 million last year. You want to add another 400 to 600,000 that came in without the benefit of doing it the right way. What is the right number? If over 2 million is not enough, would someone please tell me what the right number is? And I would uh, encourage other countries to act accordingly. The Vatican, for its part, welcomes millions of visitors each year. I was one of them earlier this year. Uh, but always allows for a very select few who meet the strict criteria to be admitted as residents or citizens. So they have high, high immigration laws in place. They have giant walls around their Vatican City, which is a sovereign nation. They have their own security. They don't go by any other laws except their own. They're able to cover things up that way, especially when it comes to pedophilia or, uh, or gay sex with these priests. And... But we're supposed to take in everybody in the world, and we're racist if we don't do it. That's the story out there. And there's some pictures of the wall. You know, look at look how high those are. That nobody, you know, it, that's a big ladder you're gonna have to get, or a giant tunnel, and it's all surrounded by roads and bridges. And uh, you know, let me tell you, Vatican City is an amazing place with what they've done with it. But that's what you do when you're able to take all the wealth and launder drug money and do all kinds of other things. And yet you basically don't have to face any laws. And so what's going on with this immigration crisis in Europe? Right now, uh, Daily Mail is reporting rape and child abuse are rife in German refugee camps. Unsegregated conditions blamed as women are seen as fair game in overcrowded migrant centers. So uh, campaigners claim that they saw unaccompanied, that men there are seeing unaccompanied women as fair game. And also, they blame the conditions in which occupants were unsegregated by gender or nationality. They're just sticking people in fenced-in areas and hoping they get along. But when you have, if you could see the pictures for yourself, it's not a majority of families going into these centers. It's a majority of young males. And what are young males full of? They're full of testosterone. And that's what you're going to get. Uh, and then you have people that maybe lost their husbands, so they're fleeing women with their children. And they are being fair game. There's, there's claims of... Uh, child sex and uh, and rape among the women. So that's what's going on in Germany right now. Really makes you wonder. Now we have on InfoWars, oh, going back to Pope Kid, I encourage you to go watch the interview that uh, David, or uh, is it Darren McBreen and Kit Daniels did yesterday, Pope Kid, what they don't want you to know. That's up on InfoWars in our featured section. And a pretty funny moment there where Kit Daniels actually calls the Pope Pope Marx. <laughs> he has a Freudian slip because he is a Marxist wanting to have, uh, you know, us live without air conditioning or TV or anything else that, that, you know, a modern society has. He's trying to sell the agenda that we should not have this. We should all live as one under the, the trees, I guess. And, but that's the thing. Humans have created this environment and, you know, we are liable for the pollution that we put out in this world, like the geoengineering that the Pope won't talk about. You know, that's never on the table. It's never geoengineering or fluoride in the water supply or the drugs that get into the water supply. There's all kinds of stuff that, that they put chemically into our bodies to change us, to keep us dumbed down and stupid. But I want to uh, go now to a video. This is uh, done by Jakari Jackson and David Knight. Public rides buses so Pope can fly in a private jet. That's right. The Pope admits 572 tons of CO2 during his trip, but he's telling us we can't have air conditioning. Right now, There's uh, the air conditioning seemed to froze in this little studio. So maybe the Pope has prayed that InfoWars does not get its air conditioning as well. So let's go to that report. I accomplished so much good throughout the history of the United States. What did you think of the Pope's speech? He was fabulous. Yeah, fabulous. I'm not even Catholic, and I think he's wonderful. What do you think of his views on climate change? I support them. 
Yeah, I think enough's enough. I mean, I'm not somebody that's been a huge, huge advocate for climate change, but just seeing the people here today and hearing the Pope, you really realize that it's a, it's something we need to be very proactive with and take steps today to ultimately make a better tomorrow. And what are you doing to reduce your carbon footprint? I take the bus to work quite a bit. I'll take the train. Try not to drive into work when, when possible and really focus on public transportation. And what will you do to reduce your carbon footprint? Um, recycling. That's, I do that all the time. I'm driving a Prius. Well, okay, he didn't use the words climate change. And he didn't use the word climate once. Um, he did like speak on a lot of powerful things like poverty, the death penalty, um, just environmental degradation overall. Um, I think he maybe might have done that to not step on people's feet, to let the ignorant be ignorant, um, but hear what he had to say, which is a start, which is more than nothing. So, we're, we're more than happy to have been a part of this historical event today. Are you guys doing anything to lessen your carbon footprints? I mean, we took a bus here. There's like 50 of us that came from school, so we took one bus as opposed to multiple cars. Um, we did that. We always turn our lights off. We always recycle too. We We're doing environmental recycle. studies, so. We're environmental studies majors. Yeah. And what else? Oh, we don't drive. Nope. Don't there you we go. ever drive? Is it just a temporary thing? I mean, I still don't know how to drive, so. <laughs> who, who knows, really? How old are you, do you mind? I'm 18. 18. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, those are some uh, climate terrorists right there. They don't drive, they don't do anything. You know, they, they recycle, they turn off their lights. They're very good, good citizens, and they're big, they've been programmed like that since, I guess she's 18 now, that one girl was. So, you know, late 90s, she was born, definitely a millennial. And that's what they've been doing is programming the younger generation. So as they grow up, they take these values and instill them in their kids. And then that's how they change society. So it takes usually a generation or two or a generation and a half to make this happen, but they're definitely working on it. Unless you talk to my kids, my kids are not falling for the propaganda. And we talk about it all the time. Uh, this morning, the Pope was at the UN. He also went to the 9-11 Memorial and did a multicultural um, multicultural type religious ceremony with all the religions getting together to show that all religions um, are the same and can, well, who knows? We're going to see a report from David Knight later on about that. But right now, I want to get to his UN agenda is not about sustainability. It's not. It's about total control and having a small pyramid of very, very wealthy, powerful people on top and lots of plebes underneath holding up the golden throne. So let's go to that report. Warsite.com, I'm David Knight, and as we see from this perspective, we can see a little bit of the UN, but of course you can see a lot more of the police. The perimeter extends two blocks on either side of the uh, road, that 40, 43rd Street that goes down to the UN, and of course uh, you can't get any closer than 2nd Street, which is a couple of blocks away. So a huge perimeter they put around here. Thousands and thousands of police officers. This is what it's come to. This is the total police state. But what is its ultimate objective? Its ultimate objective is not to protect one individual. Its ultimate objective is to set down a new agenda for sustainability. This is what the UN spokesman on the news are openly saying now. There it is, the new agenda for sustainability. You can watch that one at Public Rides Buses so Pope can fly on a private jet. Give me a call now, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. I'd like to take a few of your calls, and we got a lot more. It's the fourth hour of Overdrive. We are still live. This is the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Sitting in here for the fourth hour, we got a variety of hosts that come in here and do this, and uh, we're going to be doing it from now on. So if your radio station in your area is not carrying the fourth hour, be sure you could give them a call and say, hey, Alex Jones is doing a fourth hour now. Let's get it on. And uh, speaking of which, if you're also, if you have a local TV station in your area and you'd like to see them carry a TV broadcast of this show, also the InfoWars Nightly News, we have a, you can still go download a, a packet, information packet at InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb. Scroll down a little bit, you download the PDF. You can send that to your TV station, get them to start carrying this, follow up with a phone call, follow up with an email, get your other friends to do it. When they see, you know, when I'm uh, looking at my emails, I see three people send me something. I go, wow, this must be pretty important. Three different people send it to me. I'm going to check it out. 
And sometimes if you put a good headline in your uh, email, it helps as well. Uh, we got interrupted in the break by the UN agenda, not about sustainability. I'm not going to finish that report, but go check it out on our YouTube channel, or you can find it on the article, Public Rides, Buses So Pope Can Fly in a Private Jet. And there's the two lovely ladies who are riding buses to maintain a low carbon footprint, and they don't even drive. They don't know what freedom is. Freedom is about traveling around to where you want to go, not being stuck on a bus line. What if you want to go on the road less traveled? Also, I'm going to take your phone calls right now. We have uh, Charles from Georgia. Looks like he's been holding the longest. Let's talk about